One of the great thinkers of the 20th century was Martin Buber. He was a philosopher, a theologian, a mystic, and a psychotherapist, all rolled up into one man. He was a marvelous thinker. His two great works were I, Thou, and The Eclipse of God. In the book, I, Thou, he says there's two ways to stand in the midst of this universe. To have an I, It relationship with the objects around us, or an I, Thou relation with the persons that cross our paths. In the I, It relationship, we could treat other people as objects, and they could treat us as objects. Sometimes this is ethically and morally neutral. We get on a bus, we pay our fare, we don't care about the bus driver, he doesn't really care about us. He could be a robot as well as a human being. However, if we begin to converse with him and say, how's your day going? What's the weather like? He begins to ask us where we're going, what we're doing. Then we begin to move from the I-it relationship into an I-thou relationship. Granted, at a very superficial level. But at the deepest level, when we enter into an I-thou relationship, we reveal to another human being who we are. It's risky because our defenses go down, and they reveal to us who they are. And a bond of love in that moment can grow very strong. In human relationships, we tend to move from the I-it to the I-thou and back to the I-it again. But there's one relationship which can never be reduced to an I-it relationship. And that's our relationship with the divine thou, God himself. Now, Bruber would acknowledge that individuals could curse God, reject God, ignore God, try to pretend that God doesn't exist, but God continues to be there, calling the individual to a loving, personal relationship of one sort or another. Now, in his book, The Eclipse of God, Martin Buber comes up with this marvelous analogy. He said that when primitive people would see a solar eclipse, there would be darkness at noon. They would see the sun disappearing. They would feel the cold breezes starting to surround them. And they would say, the sun has died. Many thinking it must be the end of the world. But shortly, the sun would reappear as the moon moved out of the path of the sun. Well, Buber would say, in the modern world, there's been an eclipse of God because of great hellish and horrific movements, like the Nazi movement. How could God exist and allow such terror to come upon the earth? Or communism with all of its gulags, etc. These notions that evil was triumphant in all of its forms had to be something frightening for humanity. And God seemed to be absent from the human experience. God was eclipsed by those types of movements. And individuals, too, could have some tragedy in their life so they can't see light anywhere. They can only feel their pain and have the darkness in their soul and mind. And they would say, God doesn't exist for me. But Buber would say, God's light continues to shine. But there's a need for a transcendent faith experience in that divine being to keep us going through the darkness and even growing. Each of us are on a great pilgrimage. We have dark moments in our life, times of confusion, times when we're betrayed by human beings, times when we seem to be let down by God. But nevertheless, we are lovers of God and neighbor. 
We shouldn't treat others as objects, and we shouldn't try to reduce God to an it and demand that God meet all of our needs the way we want them to be met and according to our understandings of that divine being. We have to trust in the people we love with all the risk that's involved there. And we know that human beings will many times betray that trust. But with a faith in a God of Israel, the biblical God, we never become absorbed in God, but we become absorbed by our love of God and our faith and trust that ultimately he triumphs over the darkness. I hope whatever's eclipsing God in your life will soon fade away and you'll know peace. Shalom.